Hey guys, welcome back to the garden today. I am, it's Sunday morning, uh, pretty early, like 8.30 in the morning. I am just outside getting one outdoor task done today. Um, it is supposed to rain the majority of the day, so I saved a lot of my indoor tasks for this afternoon, which I will take you along with me on that. I have got some potting up to do and then some seed sowing to do. But the thing I wanted to get done this morning, which I thought would be a good time before the rain comes, it also rained yesterday so the ground is nice and soft, I have this area on the side of my house. So this is kind of the side of my house and then behind me here, I have this kind of like square patch that leads up to the side door. And last year I tried to turn this patch, I was hoping into like a perennial flower and herb garden. It didn't really work out that well, but the things that did come back, I had anise hyssop, um, a medicinal herb that came back. And then actually all of my um, salvia that I grew from seed last year came back. But I've got some clumps that are in some places that I want to move around, one in particular. So that's what I'm going to be working on. So let me give you a close up of what the space looks like. So here is what I have going on. It does have a lot of weeds, but I planted a couple bunches of chives because I just thought the pretty purple blooms in the spring would be nice. I have got this here and then this one here, which I believe is anise hyssop, um, that medicinal herb that came back from last year where I planted it. So I have to wait to see when it flowers, if it is that, but I believe it is. And then here, here, here and here, this is salvia, um, purple salvia. And this one here is really, really big. So I'm hoping to dig this one up and put it back here and fill this in a little bit more. Let's get started digging this up. I decided to move it over here because I want to leave this space open for the village person who comes every month to read our meter. That way he's not having to walk, he or she is not having to walk through um, piles of foliage in bees. So now I've got chives, um, salvia, and what I believe is anise hyssop. So all of the things that are in this bed will have purple toned flowers or flower spikes. Um, and I think about it, it will be really pretty and it will bloom kind of throughout the season. The chive blossoms will bloom first, then the salvia will come on, and then the anise hyssop will flower once it gets three or four feet tall. So it'll look like a really nice um, lavender or purple display when it all grows in, which I think will be really pretty. All right, I am back inside. It has officially started raining, and like I said, it's probably gonna rain the rest of the day here. Um, so I'm getting some indoor stuff done. I have got some seeds in my starter tray that need to be potted up. I've got a few herbs, some peppers, and some celosia. Um, and then I have a couple pots left, which I've already filled with soil. Um, and I'm gonna plant, I think, a few more things. None of my marigolds that I planted earlier in the year germinated for some reason. So I'm gonna sow a few more of these. These are um, lemon and tangerine gems. They are an edible marigold. They tend to, the plants are a little bit more compact and smaller. They worked really well last year in my tomato bed. So I'm hoping I can grow five or six of these. Um, some mammoth sunflowers, which I do have two in my, where I have my seed starting set up in my laundry room um, going, but they are growing really fast. And I'm worried that with our weather, I'm not gonna be able to get them outside before they overgrow their pots. So I'm just gonna plant a few since they grow so fast and see if I can get some more. 
Um, didn't have super good germination on a couple of my zinnias and I got this variety this year called Queen Lime Red that I really wanted to try. So I'm gonna sow a few more of those. Um, and then I have to start all of my basils. So I have three different basils. I have a dark purple opal, a Genovese, and a lemon basil. And what else do I have here? I'm gonna try to start a little bit more parsley um, because one of the ones I have planted in the garden right now has been decimated by a rabbit. And the three that I started in my starter trays, only one has sprouted. So I'm gonna try one more of those and I'm gonna start some lemon balm. So I mostly start seeds in these 72 cell trays, um, but now just with space, it comes out at different times. I'm not the best at planning, so I'm gonna start some things in these, um, I think these are two and a half inch pots. Um, and then I got this pack of like peat pellets that expand. I don't love using these, but it was small and compact and it actually fits perfectly in like this extra space that I have in my tray where my pots are. So I'll probably plant some things in there. When I'm taking stuff out of my little starter tray, my 72 cell tray, I use a super sophisticated tool. It's a chopstick. Um, and that's kind of how I get my uh, starts out and then I'll put them in the bigger pots, pot them up. I don't know why, but I had ton of trouble starting my herbs this year. Um, never had that happen, not sure why. Normally I am just overrun with oregano. Um, only had one little cell germinate this time. And there is a thyme, it's an orange thyme that I was really excited to grow. Um, only got one cell of those to germinate. So I'm hoping that it survives my transplant here. And I will at least have one of those. I picked up a lemon thyme from the store the other day, which is in one of my previous videos, but I'm excited for this orange one. One of the plants that I have had the worst luck with last year, and it's not starting off too well this year. Well, it's not terrible, but it's not great, are peppers. Um, last year I grew a bunch of peppers as I always do from seed um, and they were doing really well. And then when I transplanted them into the garden, um, a couple weeks later, they all started dying. Don't know why they never really established roots. Maybe they were overwatered peppers really do like it hot. Um, I put them outside last year when it was already pretty hot out. Maybe it was too hot and they weren't established. Not quite sure. Um, this year I had a really hard time just with germination. So I only have a few. The few that I do have look good. So I'm hoping that they pull through. Now this is actually two pepper seedlings. I don't know if peppers like to be separated, but I definitely know two cannot survive in these pots. So I'm just gonna do it and see what happens. As I mentioned earlier, it is Sunday where I am. I don't know if anyone else is like this. I tend to do a lot of my stuff on Sundays. Um, I know a lot of people like Saturdays to get things done. Not me. After working a full week of a full-time job, um, I do travel a fairly significant amount for work too. Saturdays are my day to just kind of like chill out. Um, maybe run a few errands, but I don't get a ton done. So yesterday I took the majority of the day and just kind of relaxed. And Sundays, I don't know, Sundays for me, I just prefer to get things done on Sundays. Is anyone else like that? Um, like today I'm making sourdough bread. I got some of that stuff done outside. I'm working on potting up some things, planting some seeds. Um, I've got laundry going. Sometimes I'll do grocery shopping. Yeah, I just, Sundays when the sun comes up, um, especially in the summer when it's up early, I am just like an up and at them, like let's get going type of person. I 
will say the peppers that I do have, the little plugs look really good. So I'm hopeful that these will pull through and I will have some peppers this year. I don't grow anything super interesting. I have some jalapenos, some bell peppers, um, this one variety that I got last year that I wanted to try, which is called a sugar rush peach. It's like a peach flavored hot pepper. Um, I was really excited. Again, they all died last year. I only have one this year. So fingers crossed that it pulls through. Um, the other one that I'm trying this year is called the Jimmy Nardello. It is a longer, thinner red pepper, like a sweet pepper, an Italian sweet pepper. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I grow. I don't, we're not, I should say, I like hot sauce, my husband does not, so I don't grow a ton of peppers for those types of things. Um, I stick with kind of the basics, bell peppers, jalapenos, maybe a couple specialty. Okay, so I've potted up the rest of my seedlings and planted a couple seeds. I planted zinnia, marigold, and a sunflower. And all I have left now are these little, um, what they call like peat discs that expand. So they start off, they're just like this tiny little disc. You add water to the tray and then the discs puff up. Um, and I'm gonna use this for my basil. So I decided I'm not gonna sow, well, I decided by default because I don't have any more space. I'm not gonna sow the parsley and the lemon balm. I'll just, the lemon balm can be direct sown outside, so I'll probably do that. Um, parsley, I may just end up purchasing more if I need more. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, so I've got, I'm gonna use this little, I guess like seed starting tray um, with the discs um, for my basil. So I really enjoy Genevieve's basil the most, so I'm probably going to do six little starts of the Genovese and then three of the dark purple and three of the lemon. And that is what I will start with. I'll probably sow some more basil, you know, every two weeks for a little while um, because I find that it goes to seed really, really quickly here because we tend to get really hot really fast. Um, so I'm trying to do better about like constantly sowing seeds this year um, for the things that I know I want to try to have a lot of. So um, all I'm going to do is take some seeds and put them in these little cups. So these come with, it's, I don't know, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's like a, I'm sh you might have seen, you, you've probably seen these at the garden center. They're in all the big box stores. They have um, like a casing around them um, that you can plant directly in the ground and it'll break down. I typically rip it off myself when I use these, but they are, you know, self-contained and then all of the soil and nutrients and stuff is already in them for seeds to get started. They're not huge, so you may have to pot up if you're growing things in them that you want to get a little bit bigger before you put them outside, but basil should be okay. So all I'm gonna do is take actually um, this casing gives you like a little hole in the top, but I just pull the sides apart to kind of keep the opening a little bit bigger. So I am just kind of gonna make a little divot with my chopstick here, a little seed hole for my seeds. Not too deep because basil seeds are really small, so they don't need to be sown very deep. Um, and then, I will be good to go. Basil's one of my favorite things to grow, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm not very good at it for whatever reason. Uh, it tends to, like I said, flower really quickly. Uh, I can never really seem to get bushy plants no matter how much I pinch. I try to plant them under my tomatoes so they're not in direct sun all the time. It just never really works that well. So, you know, we'll just keep trying. And I will just kind of move a little bit of the soil over the tops of them. Not to necessarily bury them, but just to keep some moisture in. 
This little kit does come with a lid that you can put on top. Um, things that do that just help keep moisture in so the soil doesn't dry out. But you do have to be careful because you don't want it to be so moist that you start growing you know, mold and things like that. I'm actually gonna plant in between the dark purple basil just so that I know the difference. And they sprout because I am out of plant labels. And I think I'm just gonna try to get by without any for the remainder of the season. Probably not a smart idea, but it's what I'm going with. If you have trays like I have and they don't have a cover, um, but you wanna do it, I've also used just like plastic wrap over the top and then you can remove it once your seeds germinate. Works just as good. So if you are, again, looking for some sort of dome to put over it, plastic wrap will work as well. So now is the hard part. We just have to wait to see what ends up happening. Um, I will probably put the lid over this for a little while just because these are smaller pots so they tend to dry out a little bit faster. Um, and then the other ones I will move downstairs under the grow lights. Well, I'll move all of this under the grow lights, um, give it a good water, and um, hopefully things will continue to thrive now that they are potted up. So I think that's where I'm gonna end it here today. Thanks so much for spending a little bit of time doing some garden tasks with me today and um, I'll keep you updated on the progress in future videos. Take care guys. Bye.